The PlayStation 4 has been around for five years. Thus, it comes as no surprise that there already are tons of rumors about its successor. In fact, we know that a PlayStation 5 is coming, as it has even been confirmed by the CEO of Sony Interactive Entertainment America, Sean Layden. But when will it be released? How powerful will it be? And which studios are working on PS5 games as we speak? Sit back, relax and enjoy. Game Grounds look into the future of PlayStation. Video games are looking better and better each year. There's no doubt that PS4 exclusives like God of War have amazing graphics. On the other hand, with some third-party titles, for instance Assassin's Creed Origins, Shadow of War or The Witcher 3, the difference between PC and PlayStation is noteworthy. This gap keeps getting larger. And that's why there will naturally be a demand for more powerful next-generation consoles from gamers and game developers alike. As a matter of fact, game studios are working with the PS5 already. According to Marcus Sellers, industry insider with a solid track record, third-party studios have had access to PS5 dev kits since early 2018. Thanks to that, many specs of the console have leaked. So we have quite a good idea about what hardware will be inside the PlayStation 5. God. Like PS4 and PS4 Pro, the system is being designed by Mark Cerny and his team. Consequently, don't expect any crazy hardware changes such as a brand new architecture. At the core of the PS5 there will be an AMD Accelerated Processor Unit or an APU, which is a chip that includes both a CPU and a GPU. APUs are currently used in Xbox One as well as PS4 consoles, however in these cases they are are mobile chips meant for notebooks. In contrast, the silicon in the PS5 will be a desktop class APU. If you're a specs guy, you may be happy to hear that the chip will have 8 Zen cores, 16 threads and it will be manufactured using the 7 nanometer technology. As for the GPU, PS5 will have a custom one, based on the upcoming Navi architecture. Memory will receive an upgrade too, as the system will most likely feature a faster GDDR6 RAM compared to GDDR5 sticks that can be found in the PS4. With regard to hard drives, I expect the PS5 to come equipped with a 2TB HDD, since the size of games keeps increasing. In an ideal world, next-gen consoles would be based solely on flash storage, which would make them noticeably faster and quieter. Nevertheless, high-capacity SSDs are unfortunately still way too expensive. Thus, in my opinion, the best-case scenario in the real world is that we'll get a combination of both a smaller but super-fast flash memory and a large traditional spinning hard drive. Another drive that may stick around is an optical drive. The PS4 Pro doesn't support 4K Blu-rays and it's hard to say whether PS5 will, but what I'm personally convinced about is that the PS5 will feature an optical drive of sorts. Why? Well, for one thing, even though the PlayStation Store is making more and more money each year, the majority of revenue in console gaming is even now made at retail. In addition, Sony made huge emphasis on the ability to share disc-based games when revealing the PS4 in 2013. And that was one of the key reasons why they won this console generation. While logical, removing the Blu-ray drive would simply be a very risky move. Just heard you there. When a gamer buys a PS4 disc, they have the rights to use that copy of the game. They can trade in the game at retail, sell it to another person, lend it to a friend, or keep it forever. <laughs> wow! 
Thanks to all the mentioned upgrades, especially the desktop level APU, the PS5 can potentially be 6 to 8 times more powerful than the standard PS4. Nonetheless, don't expect a PS2 to PS3 jump in graphics. It will no doubt be a major step up from the PS4, but the difference will, needless to say, be smaller when you compare it to the PS4 Pro. PlayStation, though, is still in a better position than Xbox, since Microsoft will probably want to release a new hardware to compete with the PS5, but given how powerful Xbox One X is today, the next Xbox will either be only a small upgrade or it will not be affordable. Anyhow, even if the step up in graphical fidelity won't be mind-blowing at launch, we will likely appreciate the power of the next-gen consoles later on in their life cycles, when games will not only have better graphics, but they will also feature richer and more alive environments, more advanced online functionalities and much smarter artificial intelligence. Another area in which the upgrade from PS4 to PS5 will be worthy of attention is virtual reality. As it happens, the AMD APU is said to have been designed with VR in mind. Of course, chips do not need to be created for VR in order to work with it, but what this likely means is that all the necessary components will be built in the console this time. As a result, the black box that currently comes with PSVR would no longer be required. Additionally, the amount of cables will presumably be reduced, possibly even to zero, as wireless adapters for HTC Vive and Oculus Rift are already a thing. Nevertheless, it's unlikely you'll be able to use PSVR wirelessly at launch of the PS5, since it would require Sony to either release a costly adapter or a brand new headset. Don't get me wrong, PSVR could certainly use an upgrade. It lags behind its competition in terms of displays and let's not forget that the Move controllers are nearly 9 years old. However, Sony can't expect customers to buy two relatively high-end products at the same time. Therefore, I believe that an upgraded PlayStation VR headset, designed specifically for the PS5, is coming, but it will be released a few years after the console itself. What will naturally come out alongside the console is a new controller. While there haven't been any rumors about the features of a DualShock 5, it likely won't be too different from its predecessor since the PS4 gamepad is considered to be one of the best out there. If there's one problem with the DualShock 4, it is its short battery life. Sony can however easily solve this by removing the touchpad. It consumes a lot of energy and it isn't utilized well by most titles. The current gamepad has a built-in speaker and a headphone jack, so a possible DualShock 5 feature that naturally comes to mind is a built-in microphone. Furthermore, hardcore gamers have been longing for an official customizable DualShock, ever since the Xbox Elite controller has been released, thus it's possible Sony will offer a more premium version of the PS5 gamepad as well. One more thing Xbox currently has, while PlayStation doesn't, is backwards compatibility. This will in all likelihood change with the next generation. The reason why the PS4 isn't backwards compatible with the PlayStation 3 is that they are based on two completely different architectures. The PS3 was one of the few products using the complex cell technology, while the PS4 is built around the standard x86 architecture used by virtually all contemporary computers. The PS5 will also be based on the x86 architecture and as it was mentioned it will have an AMD APU, just like its predecessor. For these reasons, backwards compatibility with PS4 and PS4 Pro will almost certainly be one of the features of the PlayStation 5. And that is what we know about the hardware of the PS5, but what truly makes or breaks any console are not its components, but the games. As I've told you at the beginning, studios already have access to PS5 dev kits, hence games for the next PlayStation are unquestionably being worked on today. Sony has confirmed just recently that the PS4 is in the final phase of its life cycle. Accordingly, Death Stranding, Ghost of Tsushima, Days Gone and The Last of Us Part 2 are most likely some of the last AAA exclusives coming to the platform. It is safe to assume that games for the next-gen system are currently in development 
development at many of Sony's first party studios, especially at the ones that have put out a big PS4 title not long ago and their upcoming project hasn't been announced yet. That is Sony Santa Monica, Quantic Dream, Gorilla Games and possibly also others like the Japan Studio or Polyphony Digital. What's more, we know that there's a quote unquote secret team working on a PlayStation exclusive in San Diego. Given that this team has been formed just recently, that it includes some former Naughty Dog employees and that it allegedly cooperates on its project with Naughty Dog, the most plausible explanation for its existence is that the team is working on a new Uncharted title for the PlayStation 5. The game can potentially be a tie-in to Nathan Drake's big screen debut as an Uncharted movie is indeed in production. Be sure to check out my in-depth video on the film to learn all about it. Anyway, independent creators Sony has good relationships with, such as Ready at Dawn, Supermassive or Insomniac are probably working on PS5 projects too. These studios are the so-called second parties, but third parties are working with the new hardware as well. To be exact, Cyberpunk 2077 by CD Projekt Red is said to be one of the first already announced next-gen games. In addition, it's nearly certain that the next Grand Theft Auto will also be a next-gen title, since for several years Rockstar has been putting all of its efforts into Red Dead Redemption 2. Interestingly, the PS4 generation will become the first console generation to have no GTA title made specifically for it ever since Rockstar Games was founded in 1990. This is because GTA 5 was still a PS3 gen title, and by the time GTA 6 comes, the PlayStation 5 will surely have been out already. So when will the PS5 be released? Historically, a new PlayStation console was always released give or take 6 years after the one preceding it, which means that the PS5 could be launched around the fall of 2019. According to hardware experts from Digital Foundry, late 2019 is actually the earliest time frame the PS5 could realistically come out in, as neither the GDDR6 memory nor the AMD APUs will be ready for mass production prior to that. Therefore, I believe it's safe to say that the PS5 will be released either in the fall of 2019 or in 2020. Not that his opinion matters too much, but industry analyst Michael Pachter said he thinks there's a 25% chance the PS5 will come out in 2019 and a 75% chance it will be released in 2020, which is about in line with Digital Foundry as well as with my own educated guess. So that is when you'll most likely be able to get your hands on the PlayStation 5. But when will it be announced? Well, both the Xbox One and the PS4 were revealed at their own special events early in 2013 and the companies then shared more details at E3 in June. This model has proven to work well, thus I think that the same scenario will repeat with the PS5. That means that whether it will come out in 2019 or 2020, Sony would reveal it at a special PlayStation meeting sometime early that year. And at E3 we'd learn more information, including the exact release date and the price. And speaking of the price, how much will the PS5 cost? This generation of consoles taught us that the $399 price point is an ideal compromise for making a console both affordable and powerful. PS4 and PS4 Pro both had the mentioned price tag at launch and I'm convinced Sony will play it safe with the PS5 too and it will also launch at $399. Now there's one other thing I'd quickly like to address. Whenever I read a discussion about the PS5, there always are frustrated people in the comments who have recently bought a PS4 and they feel like it was a waste of their money since the PS5 may be around the corner. If that's your case, let me tell you, your money was well spent. The fact that the PS5 is coming doesn't make the PS4 any less amazing. Its library includes countless incredible titles and it will only expand with games we can already call masterpieces like The Last of Us Part 2 still yet to come. The PS4 is simply must have and even if you bought it right before stumbling upon this video, it was a good decision. 
With the PlayStation 5, it is my belief that Sony will deliver a next-gen system gamers desire. One that will have an excellent lineup of games from both first and third-party developers. One that will be ready for the future while offering backwards compatibility. One that will be significantly more powerful while still being affordable. If they do this, and I'd say the chances are high, the future of PlayStation will be, in my opinion, very bright. Do you agree? Share your thoughts in the comment section, please subscribe and turn on notifications not to miss my upcoming videos. Until then, this has been Game Ground. See you around.